President Truman's Irish setter, Mike, had the run of the White House. But when the Irish setter, King Temaho, moved in with the Nixon family, the breed became the country's third most popular. And Irish setters are romantic, too. They're great kissers. They're really boisterous. They really love to have a good time and party. Irish setters are happy-go-lucky, playful dogs that thrive on physical activity. The fields and woods of Sharps Farm in New Hampshire are pure heaven to an Irish setter. Irish setters were bred in Ireland. They need a lot of exercise. They love to run. They're very, very fast. No one knows for sure, but it's believed that the Irish setter developed in the 1700s from a mix of Irish water spaniel, Irish terrier, setting spaniels, pointers, and a dash of Gordon setters. But its signature silky mahogany coat is not its original coloring. No, this is what they first looked like, mostly white with red patches. It was originally red and white. Um, now there is a separate breed called the red and white setter. The deep red coloring appeared in the 19th century. It became a mark of quality and superior sporting ability. And to newcomers and veterans alike, the rich red coat caught in just the right light remains one of the most beguiling features. As bird dogs go, the Irish setter was designed to do it all. Find birds, point them out to the hunter, and to retrieve down quarry. They do this by quartering, running a unique zigzag pattern in front of the hunter. This helps them scan up and down the wind for bird scent. Finding birds over miles of territory takes what breeders call an excellent nose. Irish setters scent their quarry in the air, not on the ground like scent hounds. Its narrow balanced frame and long legs make the setter nimble enough to turn on a dime. Some say the Irish setter can run faster and has more endurance than other setters. These dogs have the ability to travel over vast and varied terrain. Characteristics that come only in a dog with a cavernous chest that houses a massive heart and gigantic lungs, which provides these energetic dogs with plenty of oxygen. But this high-spirited breed does have some health issues. Like most large canines, Irish setters are prone to cancer. I do think, unfortunately, setters in general are prone to cancer, and they do tend to suffer from bone cancer as well. But fortunately for these dogs, new advances in veterinary medicine are helping nurse them back to health. Jeff Philibert knows a lot about cancer in Irish setters. It's his life's work. And that work led him to a special friend. Hi, Diane. This is Dr. Philibert. How are you doing? How's Felix feeling today? Dr. Jeff Philibert is a veterinary oncologist who treats dogs and cats with cancer, hundreds of them each week. I definitely think we see more cases on an annual basis and cancer on an increasing incidence uh, in our older pet population. Two and a half years ago, however, tragedy struck, and Dr. Jeff Philibert, the oncologist, became Jeff Philibert, his own client. Within 30 days of each other, he lost both of his beloved dogs, Clifford, a shepherd husky mix, and Calvin, a lab Australian shepherd mix, to a fast-spreading malignant cancer of the blood vessels. That ripped my heart out. People talk about that idea of the one perfect dog, and you know, I had two perfect dogs. I just really don't think that emotionally I was ready to, to let another dog into my heart, and I think part of it may have been for the fear of loss. Two years ago, Penny, a year-old Irish setter puppy, was brought to Dr. Philibert for a consultation. The dog's breeder was having trouble finding a home for the dog due to a recurring cancer. The second removal, the tumor had not been completely removed. It yet grew back another time. But Dr. Philibert soon discovered that with the right treatment, Penny could recover. But the treatment would be expensive, a cost Penny's owner feared she could not cover. The dog's future remained uncertain, and it looked like she might have to be put down. I could sense was getting emotional, you know, because she had obviously had a bond with her and was really trying to look at, you know, what is she going to do? But on that visit, the insightful dog sensed a connection with the doctor and took matters into her own paws. As her owner and Dr. Philibert discussed the pup's future, Penny climbed onto Philibert's lap 
and into his heart. She literally chose me. I didn't even think about it, and I just said, I'll take her. A week later, Dr. Philibert adopted Penny, surprising his family when he brought the Irish setter home with him. A year later, Penny is happy, active, uh, runs faster than any dog that I've seen. Today, after successful surgery, Penny is a happy and healthy dog. Go well, find a bird. She uh, has absolutely filled the hearts and, and the void that we had from losing Clifford and Calvin previously. Fate, you know, has its way of working things out. That she came here that day and, you know, she, you know, she needed me, I guess, as much as I needed her. And I do truly believe that that happened for a reason. Irish Setter owners will tell you that as a breed, Irish Setters seem eternally youthful and uniquely loving, devoted to their owners. But don't be seduced by this breed's charm and beauty if you can't provide the right environment for one. If you're a couch potato, don't even bother getting this animal. This is a dog that needs to run. This is a dog that needs to jump. This is a dog that needs to bark and be vocal and get his point across. <laughs> On average, Irish setters live 11 to 16 years, but they're prone to cancer, epilepsy, eye disease, and other health problems. Chiefly bloat, the life-threatening condition common to all deep-chested dogs, but setters especially. Setters require regular grooming. They do need to be brushed because they have that long, silky coat. When training, patience is a virtue. They are easy to train because they really want to please you. Sit, sit. And they make a great family pet. I've never met a mean Irish setter. And if your kids want to have a good time and they want to run and play, this is a great dog for you. So in general, these dogs need space to run on a regular basis. Among other things, it's prone to cancer and bloat. They're easy to groom, but you have to do it often. Trainable with patience and a soft touch. And one of the best breeds for an active family. Come on. Still ahead on Dogs 101, the dog that can fly through the air, and the breed that makes rats sweat. Now it's time to play Pick the Pooch, sometimes nicknamed the Smiley Dog for its seemingly permanent grin. This cold-loving, fluffy white canine originated in Arctic Siberia over 3,000 years ago. Can you guess what dog this is? The answer when we come back. Which ancient, cold-loving breed seems like it's always smiling? That's right, the Samoyed. This smiley dog sheds so much fur, it's often used to make flies for fly fishing. 